At this place in history, we're in Stowe with Steve Perkins, the executive director of the Vermont Historical Society. Steve, uh, people might well be able to figure out on their own from the former Killington lift car that's behind us that we're at the Vermont Ski and Snowboard Museum, but what brings us here? Well, Mike, we're going to be meeting with Brian Lindner, who's going to talk to us about the history of the ski patrol here in Vermont, but also how that influenced ski patrolling nationwide. We are the oldest ski patrol in the United States, yes. Still found, yes. yes, founded 1934. The very first rescue at Stowe, nobody had any medical training whatsoever. Yeah. By the second year of the Stowe Ski Patrol, you had to be certified by the American Red Cross with advanced first aid. And that has continually progressed through that today on the Ski Patrol, we have uh, uh, OEC, Outdoor Emergency Care, uh, EMTs as the general standard, all the way up to paramedic and MDs. It was 100% volunteer in the early days. And when was the first professional ski patroller employed? Uh, the first p professional patroller at Stowe was Fritz Kramer, uh, a naturalized American from Austria. Uh, he lived on the summit in the winter of 1940-41. Uh, on the summit? Mm. He lived in the, the CCC stone hut on the summit for the winter. And the state forester, Perry Merrill, uh, offered to pay Fritz Kramer for that first season, so he was paid by the Vermont mm. Department of Forest and Parks. <laughs> to live in, yeah, Civilian Conservation Corps housing from the Depression it, years. Yes, yeah. exactly. The connection between Mount Mansfield Ski Patrol, National Ski Patrol, 10th Mountain Division, is a guy named uh, C. Minot Dole, Minnie Dole. Uh, he was a member of Mount Mansfield Ski Patrol, and he was asked in 1936 to create something on a national basis, uh, and that's that led him to create the National Ski Patrol system. And then, uh, with the invasion of Finland by the Russians in World War II, winter he war, yes. the Winter War, he realized we needed ski troops. Yeah. So he influenced uh, the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and, the pre and President Roosevelt to then uh, start the 10th Mountain Division. Yeah. Stowe had uh, at least 16 veterans of the 10th Mountain Division work at the mountain, either work or volunteer at the mountain post-war, including my dad. I have been at the resort for 50 years. This is my 50th season. So you've seen awesome. a lot of changes yeah. in equipment and practices and what, and we can yeah. see some of that here. Here in the museum, we have the oldest known ski patrol toboggan in the United States. Mm. It was built by the CCC here in Stowe and it was actually recovered from a toboggan cache on the mountain in 1996. Mm -hmm. And it's made out of corrugated roofing tin. And Brian, if somebody's watching this and say, gosh, I want to become a ski patroller, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you do that? How do you get started? Every ski patrol is always looking for new recruits. Uh, we all welcome them. And if, and if you're interested, the thing to do is call your local resort, ask to talk to the ski patrol director directly. It easily takes one full season for a new patroller to really understand the whole process. There isn't a ski patrol that doesn't do a continual training all the time. You just have to, to, to stay sharp. The Mount Mansfield Ski Patrol at Stowe Mountain Resort influences the nation at this place in history.